evening, good afternoon, and welcome my sweet friend, Fight Master Yoga. I'm Leslie Fight Master, and please excuse my tardiness this morning. Should I tell you what made me late? Okay. I tried to put on false eyelashes, and <laughs> it was an epic fail, so it didn't work. Okay. So today, <clears throat> We're going to focus on our hips, and this will be an all of us class. So those of you who have been practicing with me for a while, feel free to take it up a notch. When we do some sun salutations, you could do an extra chaturanga. You could go into up dog, then back to plank, chaturanga, press to down dog. And if you're newer, you'll do your sun salutations with your knees down. And then last week, we showed how to save those wrists so if you have wrist issues then you will do them on your forearms so let's sit up nice and tall <clears throat> and if you have uh, a pillow to sit on the edge of then you're more than welcome to do that too i'm going to put on my timer because i know the last time i kind of went a little longer than i meant to but that's okay it all worked out we'll be here at least an hour together I'd say depending on how many questions you have afterwards so again sit up nice and tall and begin grounding through your sitting bones allow your hips and legs to be heavy and begin to deepen your breath If you're feeling a bit unsettled or ungrounded, take one or both hands to the floor or your yoga mat. And the tips of the fingers is great or the full palm. It's just a little way to add some extra groundedness. And when you're feeling grounded, you can return your hands to your legs. Palms up signifies re receiving. Palms down is more grounding. So check in again with the heaviness of your legs and your hips. If you can feel your sitting bones connect down to the earth, just take a moment to focus there. And from that nice, grounded heaviness that we created in our lower body, now we will begin to lengthen away from it. So start to feel lighter from above your waist as each vertebra expands and the space between each vertebra increases. And then start to lift right between your collarbones to open your chest. And then lengthen the crown of the head toward the sky as you keep your chin parallel with the earth. <clears throat> and last week we talked about Ujjayi Pranayama. This is slight constriction in the back of the throat as you breathe. One way to feel it is to inhale through the nose Exhale like you're fogging a mirror and close your mouth halfway through. So begin your ujjayi breath if you haven't already. And let's bring our hands together in front of the heart as we create an intention for our practice. <coughs> Excuse me. May this practice connect you to yourself and maybe even more importantly right now, connect you to your community. Through this connection, this energy that we all share, may you know that you have wonderful, supportive people all around the world here with you. So if your eyes aren't closed, take a moment to close them 
and just visualize the fact that there are people in their living rooms, in their dens, in their sitting rooms, maybe outside, doing the same thing that you're doing. Sitting, hands together, eyes closed. And then visualize the energy that's moving from the base of your spine through your body and out the crown of your head. And as it expands, it starts to connect with all the energy of everybody else who is doing the exact same thing that you're doing in this moment. And then let's join our energies with our voices chanting the divine sound of Om. So exhale everything out. And then inhale for Om. the essence of Om. And now release your hands and let your eyes softly blink open. And let's make our way onto our hands and knees. So we'll start with wrists under shoulders and knees under hips. So they're all lined up, but then take your hands about a handprint forward and we'll do some hip circles. So take your hips over to the right. Exhale, bring them toward the right heel and then over to the left heel. Your knees can be wider or closer apart. Inhale, bring it toward the left wrist and then toward the right wrist and then back again. So we'll do a few of these in this direction. And you can even close your eyes here because I want you to not do it perfectly. I want you to take small circles if that feels better on your body. I want you to take big circles. I want you to stop if that feels good. And remember, it's not about the pose. It's not about doing things perfectly. It's feeling your body and connecting. Yoga is connection. The word yoga means to yoke or to connect, bring together. Now, wherever you are, take a pause, and then we'll start going the opposite direction. And just feeling the hips start to move. So this is our second chakra, and the color is orange. So you can even visualize orange in your hips. And the second chakra is really about, think of it like water, very, very, movable, fluid, very creative. That's where your creative center of your body lies. And I know there were a few people last week that said when they were in pigeon pose or even some of the other poses that they felt emotional and they wanted to know if that's okay. And the answer is yes, that is absolutely okay. Take a moment to come into child's pose, and if it's not comfortable to rest your head down, you can make fists with your hands and rest your head on your hands. So when we practice our yoga, and you just stay in child's pose while I talk a moment, we practice our yoga, the body remembers. The body has its own intelligence, and sometimes things will become stuck in the body and when we practice yoga, those stuck things start to release. As Carolyn Mice would say in her book, <clears throat> Anatomy of Spirit, the issues are in the tissues. So when we practice our yoga, it gives our body a chance to release old feelings and hurts that our minds may not be aware of. So from here, Extend your arms forward, spread your fingers, make sure your arms are shoulders distance apart, and for a moment, point your thumbs to the sky. So take your palm off of the mat, point up. Notice how your outer upper arm spins down, 
and your bicep lifts up. Now see if you can keep that happening while you take your palms flat. And you'll probably need to press a little extra into the thumb first finger side of the hand as you do. And now come up onto your knees and we'll tuck the toes and stretch into down dog, but let's make it wide. So take your feet as wide as your yoga mat, keep the outer edges parallel, and then just start to bicycle. Hmm. Looks like Elmer the cat must have been spending time on my mat. There's like lots of kitty fur on it. He loves this yoga mat. <laughs> now begin to stretch back, and if you need to keep your knees bent, that's absolutely fine. And start stretching back a bit. Press into the base of your fingers as your forearms lift. And remember, you can always come back down to the knees as needed when you can be on your forearms. But just take a few rounds focusing on your ujjayi pranayama. Gently lift through your pelvic floor muscles and your low belly muscles. Uh oh, I think my hair tie just broke. I heard it. Walk your feet to hips width apart. Take an inhale onto the toes. Exhale it out. And then walk your feet to your hands. And then inhale, come halfway up, lengthen. And now fold, exhale, bend your knees as you need to. Let your head hang a moment. And then inhale to sweep your arms up. And Salma Sutihi, exhale. Yep, my hair tie broke. What are you gonna do? Back to the top of the mat. We're gonna come feet parallel, outer edges, so your toes will point in a little bit. Firm the legs, pull in the belly, lift the chest. Inhale, reach out. Exhale, hinge from your hip creases. Hips go back as you come forward, bend the knees as needed. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, step back into plank pose. Now this is where you can choose knees up or down. If you're newer, take the knees down, shifting forward to lower. If you wanna challenge yourself, keep them up. Shift the shoulders forward, slowly lower, all the way to the belly. Try everything touch at once. Then hands by low ribs, roll the shoulders away. Inhale for a little cobra. Pull the hands toward the feet and then lower. Now tuck the toes under, knees can be up or down, up is going to be more difficult. Pull the belly in, take a breath in, exhale, press to plank, knees up or down, and then to down dog all the way back. Reconnect with your breath. Now from here, we'll inhale and lift the right leg up. And now bend the knee, open up through the hip. Press back evenly through the arms and the shoulders. And then square off your hips. Draw your thigh in towards your belly or not. Take an inhale. And then as you exhale, step your foot right in the middle of your hands and spin your back heel down, lining heel to arch. And we'll come up for warrior two. Make sure your front heel is in line with the back arch and your knee is over your middle toes. Reach out through your arms and gaze over your fingers. Now bring this left hand behind you and reverse. And then bend your front knee a little bit. And then inhale back up, lean forward, take this right forearm to right thigh. Reach the left arm over, or you could take this right hand all the way down or grab your ankle. And then inhale, we'll sweep back to warrior two, stretch out the arms. Exhale, windmill down and step back to plank pose. Remember, knees can be up or down. I'll do knees down this time. Shifting forward, either all the way down or chaturanga. Then inhale, you can stick with cobra, or you can take upward facing dog with your wrists and shoulders in line. <clears throat> exhale, down dog. Take a breath here, and then we'll 
<clears throat> inhale, left leg up. As you exhale, let's bend that knee and open up through the hip. Press back evenly through the arms and the shoulders. And now square off your hips, inhale. As you exhale, thigh toward belly or not, you can just hold that leg up and then step the foot between the hands. What happens if it doesn't make it there? That's okay, comes here, you pick it up and you put it. Back heel down, line up heel to arch. Inhale, warrior two. And breathe. Make sure this knee is over the ankle above the middle toes from the back leg, but lift up through the back inner thigh. Now bring your right hand behind your back. It can rest there or maybe hook the thigh and reverse. Keep pressing into the front heel, lift your belly, and then inhale up, release this arm, lean forward, left forearm to left thigh, and right arm up and over. And feel free to take this hand down. Up to you. Take another breath here. Press firmly into the front heel as you come up. Inhale, warrior two. And then exhale, windmill down. You can skip the vinyasa and go right into down dog if you wish, or you can come to plank. Chaturanga, exhale. Inhale, up dog. Exhale back to down dog or turn it up a little plank. Chaturanga and down dog. Now breathe. Draw your low belly in and up. Just let your head hang, arms and ears in line. See if you can turn those outer upper arms, triceps back as you spin your biceps forward and press into the thumb first finger side of your hands. Now we'll inhale coming way up onto the toes. Exhale everything out, but keep your butt up. Engage your bandhas, low belly, pelvic floor, and then lightly step or hop. And then inhale to lengthen and fold as you exhale and rise up on your inhale to samastitihi. Good. So let's turn to the long side of the mat. Now, if you happen to have yoga blocks at home, put one toward the front of the mat, one toward the back of the mat. If you don't, no worries. Turn your right leg all the way out and your back toes in, lining heel to arch. You're going to take triangle pose. I'm going to go this way a little bit so I don't Run out of space. Make sure you're heel to arch with your feet. Arms up, inhale. Hinge from your hip crease and reach, reach, reach for our triangle pose. So take this right hand down wherever it lands and then stretch up through the left and see if you can keep this length from the front hip through the armpit. And then imagine there's a string here in the crown of your head lengthening it and then maybe look up. But if that hurts your neck, look forward or down. Now, can you press a little more into the big toe mound of your right foot, drawing your right hip under and lengthening your torso over the thigh? And then see if you can bring your bottom ribs forward and your top ribs back. Imagine you're right against a wall behind you, and there's another in front of you, and you're fitting right in the middle. Take one more breath here. Relax your shoulders. I always forget that. And now looking down, we'll inhale to come up. Feet to parallel. Over this way a little. Turn your left leg out, your back toes in, lining heel to arch. Bring the arms out at shoulder height. Inhale. Exhale, hinge. Reach, reach, reach. And then wherever the hand comes to, let it go there. You don't have to go past what's comfortable. I don't, I don't know if you, did you see the trophy as you turned on your video today? <gasps> yes, because there is no trophy, because it's not a contest. And there are no winners here. Just yogis, we're all winners. So start to lengthen from this hip crease to this armpit and bring your bottom ribs forward and your top ribs back. Lengthen the crown of your head 
and see if it works for you to look up, and if it doesn't, look back down or look forward. But the most important thing to do is to breathe. Keep pressing into the big toe mound of your left foot, drawing your hip under you, and although we want our leg muscles firmed, avoid as best you can locking your joints. I do it. It's a hard habit to break. Take one more breath, but it's an important one to try and break. Looking down, we'll inhale and come on up. Now take a breath in, toes in a little bit, hands on hips, and then roll the chest open, look up, and hinge from the hips to come forward. So you can have your hands on the mat or on the floor, and then folding forward any amount or option to take the big toes for D position. Grab them with your first two fingers is a little more advanced, do what you like. Lengthen, inhale, and then fold, exhale. So whichever position you're in, shift the weight toward the balls of your feet so that it's evenly distributed across your feet. And again, firm those leg muscles without locking joints. Draw your shoulders away from your ears, let your head hang, or it might touch the floor. And now see if you can find right in the outer hips and try to firm those into center. We're gonna work a little bit on those today. And now inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, bring hands to hips. Inhale all the way up. Take your arms out to shoulder height, inhale. Hold the breath, bend the knees, step or hop. Exhale. Good. Come back to the top of the mat. We're gonna do something a little bit different. We don't do all that often, but I think it's super important. So inhale, reach up. And exhale to fold. And inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plank. And chaturanga. Knees can be up or down always. Inhale, up dog or cobra is your choice. And down dog for exhales. And now from here, We'll come up onto the toes, bend the knees, and then a little step or just come right down onto your knees. And then we're going to lie down on the right side of the body. So we want to try to get all the way onto the side of the body. So remember I was telling you about these side hips? So these side hips are the gluteus medius and minimus, and we do a lot of stretching of them, but not a lot of strengthening. So you can prop your head up like I am right now, or you can let your head go, whatever you like. But lift this top leg and point your toes to the floor. And if you're a little wobbly, put your hand here. And then lift. Keep the bottom ankle flexed and lower. So when you lift, start with the heel. And exhale. And breathe in. Exhale. Up, and exhale. So you might start to feel some stuff here. That's normal. We're gonna do three more of these. Keep lifting with the heel. I know it's a little awkward. Nine, okay, now on 10, we're gonna hold it up. Keep your breath steady and do little pulses. Little tiny pulses. And just a few more. Nice work. And then we'll set it down. And then bring this leg in front with the knee down. We're going to point the heel up on the bottom leg and start lifting. Little lifts. They're very little lifts. But we're getting now the adductor muscles, the inner thigh. Just a few more. Probably starting to feel it, I know I am. Keep 
your breath nice and steady. And done. Good work. So now we're going to come to the other side. So I'm just going to sit up and take my legs over to the other side and we'll do the other leg. So you can prop your head up or you can have it down, whatever is most comfortable. So start by flexing your ankles. Get on my mat. And then for the top leg, I'm going to lift it so the toes will point down just a touch and try and lift it from the heel. You ready? Here we go. All the way up and almost all the way down without touching. Use this hand, the front hand, for support. Just keep breathing. You might be a little wobbly. I'm wobbly today. It's okay. We're already up to eight. Okay, so here's 10 and we're gonna hold it up and do little pulses. Remember, toes down a little, heel up. Pull your belly and lift your pelvic floor. That'll help stabilize you. And done, nice work. Take this top knee forward Flex the bottom leg and same thing. We're going to lift from the heel. It's just a little lift. Keep breathing. So did you feel it here in your outer hip? Now you're probably feeling it in your inner thigh. So those muscles, both, we strengthen or we stretch them a lot, but we don't strengthen them that much. So now we're strengthening. Just a few more, almost done. And that's it. Good job. We'll come back up to seated. And then we'll roll forward. So from here, some people ask me how to find the proper distance in down dog. So this is the best way I know how. If you take your extended child's pose, making sure your elbows aren't bent, but that they're straight without locking, and then you spread your fingers and lift your forearms off the floor, and even here, you're trying to turn your triceps down. So this, if you come up onto your knees, and then bring them parallel, and tuck the toes and stretch back, this is probably the proper distance for your down dog. You might need a little tiny adjustment here or there, but for most of us, and I can't say for all because everybody is proportionately a, a bit different, but that's usually a good measure. Now, if you come to plank pose from here, if your shoulders are above your wrists, then you know it's correct. But if you have to make adjustments here, then it might've been a little off. Let's go back to down dog. People ask me if you need to touch your heels to the ground. Mm -hmm. I thought you did, but you don't. In fact, I could touch my heels to the ground, but I would have to walk in, and then I wouldn't get as much length through the spine as I do when my feet are back where they should be. So we'll inhale once again to plank. Make sure your shoulders are above your wrists. Knees can be up or down. Shifting forward, chaturanga, shoulders no lower than elbows, please. And then inhale, upward dog or cobra, your choice. And exhale to down dog. Take a breath in, come on to the balls of the feet. Exhale it out and lightly step or hop your feet up. Then inhale, lengthen and exhale to fold. And press down, inhale, rise up. Samastitihi, that means steady balance. Now turn again to the long side of the mat. We're gonna step out for triangle pose. This time, we'll add an option for half moon. Turn your right leg all the way out and your back toes in. So now you've got these muscles, these gluteus medius and minimus, we're gonna use them. Arms up, hinge and reach. 
to triangle pose. So this is where if you have your block in the front of the mat and one in the back of the mat, you might use it. If not, no worries. If you're newer to this practice, I would recommend just stay here in triangle pose or play with it a little bit if you'd like. Take your top hand to the hip, look down, bend the knee. We're gonna take the right hands in front on the little toe side and make sure your wrist is underneath your ankle and that your toes didn't turn too far in. Now start to reach through that back leg. If you're steady, add your arm. If you're super steady, look up. Now, this standing leg, we're really using those minimus and medius muscles. And then this leg, we want to also try and pin those outer hips in. Take another breath here. And then we'll come out of this very slowly into warrior two. So bend the front knee a little, lift up your front arm and set it down to warrior two. Drop this front hip under. Make sure the knee is over the ankle. And breathe, just a couple breaths. Ah. And then straighten the leg, feet to parallel, other side. Left leg out, back toes in. Make sure you have enough space if you're going into your half moon. Heel to arch with the feet, arms up. Hinge and reach, 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 reach. Wherever this hand goes is fine. If you do have a block, you can put it on the little toe side of your foot and just keep it there for triangle pose. And then it's right there when you move into half moon. Now we'll take this right hand to the hip, top hand to the hip, pull the belly and lift the pelvic floor, look down, bend the knee, take your hands in front and float the back leg up. If you're wobbly, it probably will have something to do with the hand. If it's on the big toe side, it's really hard. If it's too far in front of you or too far behind you, you just want to line up your shoulder and your wrist. So if you're super steady, I'm not yet, but if you're super steady, extend your top arm up. If you're still super steady, you could look up towards your hand. Keep lengthening the top leg sitting bone to the heel and draw your left hip underneath you. Those are those side hips working. And most importantly, breathe. Now we're gonna come out of this again slowly, landing in warrior two, so start to bend the front knee, pick up the bottom hand if you can, and then set down in a nice warrior two. <sighs> Breathe here. One more breath. You are strong. Good work. Straighten the leg. Now we'll come to center. Point your toes out and your heels in. And we'll come down into goddess pose or horse stance. Make sure you're pressing your knees back, but at the same time, you're dropping your buns down. So we'll try and lift these frontal hip bones towards your lower ribs. Bring your arms up. And then right arm over left. Give yourself a big hug. So we're all hugging ourselves, which means we're all hugging each other. So it's nice. Keep dropping your hips down, pressing your knees back. I know it's hard to concentrate with all these hugs. Now we'll keep the legs the same. If you need a break, it's fine. We'll reach the arms up. You can straighten your legs, give them a little break if you like. Otherwise, stay in. And then out again, left arm over right for the hug. Just concentrate on pressing the knees back. Keep them in line with your middle toes. Frontal hip points toward low ribs, butt bones long. Just another big hug breath. And then let's release, inhale. We'll straighten the legs as we come up. Bring your feet to parallel. Take your arms out to shoulder height. Take a breath in and hold it. 
Bend the knees, step or hop your feet together, and back to the front, Samastitihi. We're gonna do a little bit of balancing. So we'll start grounding through your left leg, and we're gonna pick up the right foot. So here are some options. Right heel can stay on ankle. Right foot can go below the knee. It can also go above the knee, or if you can fit this little arch of the foot into the side of the knee, it's legal. Just don't press super hard. I'm using the wall. Now, as you settle in, find a spot to focus on. Your lifted leg hip, drop that one down. Your standing leg hip, find those outer hip muscles that we worked on and try and pin them in. And then add your arms when you're ready. Relax your shoulders and your jaw. One more breath. And let's release the hands and release the leg. All right, second side. Ground down through the right leg. Remember your options. You can keep your ball of the foot onto the floor. You can take the foot below your knee. You can get this little arch part to fit on the outer knee. As long as you're not pressing hard, you can let it sit there or bring it above the knee. Find your steady focal point. Start to squeeze the standing hip in as you drop the lifted hip down. And then add your arms when you're ready. The arms can be wide. They don't have to be shoulders distance, but straighten out those elbows. Because one thing I know, if you don't use it, you'll lose it. And eventually your elbows won't straighten. Keep your pelvic floor lifted, keep your belly lifted, but relax around your shoulders. And now we'll bring the hands down and we'll release the leg. Back to the top of the mat. Feet hip socket distance apart or big toes touching heels slightly apart. And inhale, bend the knees, come into chair pose. So instead of letting your butt flare out, drop your butt bones down. And then exhale, fold, straightening the legs. Inhale, look up, lengthen. So if you jump back to chaturanga, make sure your elbows are bent or just step to plank. That's the jump or step to plank and lower, knees up or down. Inhaling up, cobra's your option too. Exhaling back. As you inhale, we'll lift the right leg with level hips this time. So we're not going to open it. Point your toes straight down to the floor. On your exhale, hug the thigh into the belly or not. You can keep the leg up. And then step it up by the right thumb. Remember, if it doesn't make it there, pick it up and put it. Coming into high lunge. So take a moment to bend your back knee. Pull this right hip back, lift your hip points toward your lower ribs, and then start to straighten it. Now we'll take the arms out to shoulder height with right over left, either hug or eagle arms. Pull your right hip back, reach up, maybe even a teeny, teeny back bend, but pull your belly in. One more breath. Come back to center. Reach your arms up. Inhale. Exhale. Take them down. If you're getting a little fatigued, then go right into down dog or child's pose. If you still want a chaturanga, go for it. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Left leg lifts on your inhale with level hips. As you exhale, either keep it up or draw thigh into belly. Make sure your shoulders are over your wrists. Now step your left foot up. Stand the ball of the back foot as you come up. Little bend in the back knee to start. Pull this left hip back and send the right hip forward so they're level. Reach up through your arms. Remember, you can be wide. Now, as you lengthen your butt, start to straighten the back leg as much as it will. Never forcing. 
If your rib cage is popping out, that happens sometimes, take an exhale to draw your ribs in and lift up through your back body. And we'll inhale the arms out, left arm over right, give yourself a hug or eagle arms. Keep those hips pointed straight ahead to the front of the mat. And with your ribs and belly pulled in, if you want to do a little back bend here, you may. It's just an option. Relax around your neck. And then come to center, reach up, inhale. Exhale the hands down, go right to down dog or child's pose, or if you're ready for vinyasa, come to plank, chaturanga. Inhaling up, exhaling back. Take a few moments to even out your breath. Child's pose is always an option. I know I tell you you can push the pause button all the time, but I guess during live class you can't. <laughs> but if you're watching this later, you can push the pause button and you can always take a child's pose when you need it and then just jump right back in when you're ready. Not about the pose anyway. In fact, take a moment wherever you are to notice the change, the different feelings in your body and in your mind now as compared to before you started your yoga. Sometimes it's a subtle shift. Other times it's very, very, very easy to notice. Now we'll inhale onto the balls of the feet. Exhale it out, keep the hips high, butt up. Lightly step or hop, keep your bandhas engaged. Inhale, come halfway up, lengthen. Fold as you exhale, let your head hang. Bend your knees and drop your hips. Little chair pose and to samastiti. Good work. Back to balancing. So we're gonna ground down through the left leg again. We're gonna take eagle pose. So here are some choices. Bend the knee, cross right over left, keep the toes on the floor. Lift the toes off the floor and keep the foot behind you. Or <laughs> wrap the foot on the standing leg and use the wall if you need to. <laughs> Find your focal point, bring your arms out, left arm over right. Or give yourself a hug and breathe. Now, this is really the place where you can firm those outer hips in using those muscles that we worked on earlier. So do your best to get those muscles activated. Lift your pelvic floor and squeeze your inner thighs. One more breath. And then slowly releasing. Other side. Easy side. Right leg down, bend both knees. We'll cross the left over the knee. You can keep it like that. You can keep this foot on the floor. That's your option too. Or you can wrap it around and hook it <coughs> on the ankle, but then point your hip bone straight ahead. Arms out and then right on top of left. See if you can get in touch with those side hips again, firming them in towards center. And you can use those adductor muscles we worked on, those inner thighs, squeezing towards center. Keep your steady gaze and pull your belly in. And then Let's release the arms and the leg. Good job. Ah, back to the top of the mat. I know a lot of people like pigeon and a lot of people don't. So we're gonna go into pigeon, but you can take your, I'll show you the option. So inhale the arms, 
and exhale to fold. And inhale, halfway lift. Exhale to plank. You can go right into down dog or lower chaturanga. Inhale, pressing up. Exhale back. So lifting the right leg from the inner thigh. And then as you exhale, bring your right ankle over towards your left wrist and come on down. If this is uncomfortable, if this hurts your knee, roll onto your right hip and come into figure four or thread the needle. Make sure your ankle is flexed, your right ankle. In fact, just flex both of them. You can even keep your foot on the floor. If you're in pigeon, make sure your back leg is straight back behind you. If you're rolling onto this right hip, prop it up with a pillow or a block. You can stay all the way up. Inhaling, exhaling, or you can come to the forearms. Or you can rest your head down on the mat or rest it on your hands. And then just breathe here. In fact, close your eyes and allow your whole body to be heavy. Let it sink in to the earth. Let your ujjayi breath flow evenly without effort. Remember the second chakra is in the hips, all around the pelvis there. So imagine as you inhale, you're breathing in the color orange and it's vibrant. It's going right to your hips. And then as you exhale it, think of un gripping any place you could be holding, even if it's only for a moment, just let it go. Notice how that feels and by little by little, you'll notice where you're gripping and holding and you'll be able to release it easier as you continue to practice. So make this, we'll stay for a few more breaths and kind of make this a little breathing meditation. You're inhaling the color orange, nice and vibrant into the hips. And then you're exhaling any tension, any stress. One more nice long breath. And then as you take your next inhale, come on up. If you're on your back, roll to your side and sit up. If you're in pigeon, roll onto your right hip and swing your left leg around. So if you were in thread the needle, come on up. Bring this right knee back, left leg over. If that doesn't work, extend the right leg forward. Then try and get both hips on the floor and bring your left hand behind you, right arm up, inhale, and take it across and twist. So every inhale, lengthen above your waist. Keep your hips level if you'd like. And take this right hand across, or I like this one. I like to bring it through and hold. That's my favorite, but you do what you like. Every time you exhale, try and roll that left shoulder back. And 
And now inhale your head to center and unwind. We're going to take this foot here, this left one, swing it back, bring the palms down, tuck your back toes, and stretch out your right leg. Oh, there's my broken hair tie. <laughs> Give it a nice stretch. And then we'll set her down and do the other leg. Left leg up, inhale. Nice level hips. As you exhale, bring your left wrist, I'm sorry, your left ankle towards your right wrist. So even if you didn't have any knee issues on the first side, if you do on this side, I still would love for you to take this alternate pose. Make sure that the left ankle stays flexed. You can flex them both just to make sure. Lengthen as you inhale. Make sure your back toes are straight behind you if you're in pigeon. If you're rolling onto that left hip, pad it up. You can stay up on the hands or down onto the forearms or onto your forehead or you can take a cheek down. And then here we go, a couple rounds of inhaling that vibrant orange color right into your hips. And then exhale and wash away any tension. Remember the hips are fluid like water. So if yours aren't feeling very watery right now, you're not alone. It takes a while to open the hips for some. It took me a long time. In fact, when I first started practicing yoga, every time the teacher brought us into pigeon, I was like, no, not pigeon. And I would cry. I would get so emotional that I would hide my little head down so people didn't see my tears, but I was I wasn't, I wasn't crying because it hurt, although it did hurt. <laughs> it was more of those issues in the tissues kind of thing. So pigeon or any hip opener can bring up emotions and just like water, let them flow. Let them flow out with your exhales. Take a moment to honor and acknowledge all the things that your hips do for you. They carry you around. They let you sit. They let you run. If you've ever given birth, they do that too. <laughs> so acknowledge and honor your hips wherever they are in this process of unfolding and releasing and opening. Just a few more breaths with your visualization and let everything relax on every exhale. one more breath here and then as you take your next breath in walk yourself up so if you're on your back roll off to your right to come up if you're in pigeon roll onto your left hip swing your right leg around and remember if you came up and you're sitting this left knee comes back the right leg across and you can also extend the bottom leg forward if that's better on your body Bring your right hand behind you. Take an inhale, left arm up. Exhale, across and twist. Now every inhale, keep both sitting bones down as best you can. And then every exhale, roll that right shoulder open. Remember, you can take your left hand down. You can thread it through and clasp. Whatever you like, whatever's more comfortable for you. Mm 
We'll just take a couple more breaths, twisting, roll that shoulder open, keep those hips level. Now inhale, bring your head to center and unwind. I'm going to take this right leg, swing it all the way back, tuck the toes under, take your palms flat, lift your left leg up and stretch her out. And then take it down and make your way forward into plank, inhaling. And then we'll lower all the way to the belly. Knees can be up or down. Try to lower all at once. And now bring your arms right alongside your body. Pull your belly away from the mat. Press your pubic bone lightly down into the mat, lengthening butt to heels. Roll your shoulders away and lift everything up. Keep those outer hips pinning in, but don't clench your big muscle, the gluteus maximus. So relax the max. The back of the neck long. And then release and rest a moment. So we're gonna do one more of those in a moment. You can stay with the same pose, which is called Shalabhasana, or you can reach for your feet and lift into bow pose, which is Dhanurasana. So this one's locust, so pull the belly away, pubic bone down, lengthen butt to heels. Roll the shoulder heads away, lift everything up, keep the back of your neck long. Breathe. You can stay right here or bend the knees. Once you have your ankles. Make sure your knees don't go wider than your hips. Lift up and press back. There's a car alarm going off. All right, one more breath. And release it. Good work. Now we'll take the hands by the low ribs and Take a breath in, keep your knees down as you exhale, press to the knees, take your knees wide, and take your hips back to the heels. If it's nicer for you to not have the knees wide, that's fine. Let your head come down on your hands, or you can even take your arms by your sides. Just a comfortable, restful child's pose. Now make your way onto your hands and take your hips off to one side, swinging your legs in front so you can make your way onto your back. If you have any back issues, use your hands to lower yourself down. If your back is okay and you want a little core work to get down there, you can add that. Hug your knees into your chest. Rock a little side to side. If it feels like your low back needs a little more stretch other than that child's pose, then bring the legs up. Knees can be bent or straight and draw them in. You can even, if the legs will straighten, you can take them up kind of like forward fold upside down. Or stay with your knees hugging in. And then we'll slowly unwind that, taking the feet back down to the earth. Now lengthen your butt toward your heels and draw your shoulder blades toward your waist. Extend your legs. Bring your arms out. Close your eyes. Now's the part where you just rest. Forget about your ujjayi breathing, just natural breathing. Take your attention to your feet and ankles. Let them be heavy and relaxed. Bring your awareness up to your shins and your calves. 
Let them be heavy and relaxed. Your knees, your thighs, the backs of your thighs, heavy and relaxed. your pelvis, the front of your pelvis, the back of your pelvis, your buns, heavy, relaxed. Your belly, your low back, your rib cage, your middle back, your chest, your upper back, heavy, comfortable, relaxed. Your hands, your wrists, your forearms, elbows, upper arms, shoulders, heavy, comfortable, and relaxed. Your neck, your throat, the jaw, your lips, nose, eyes, forehead, top of the head, the back of the head, heavy, comfortable, relaxed, quiet mind, quiet body, Shavasana, rest. where you are. Take a deeper breath in. As you exhale, start to move your hands and your feet. Circle your wrists and your ankles. Move your arms and your legs. Inhale and stretch overhead. Reach through your feet. Exhale here. And then inhale, bend your knees and roll to your right side and just pause there a moment. Keep your eyes closed. Take a moment here to thank yourself for showing up this morning, this evening, this afternoon. Taking great care of yourself while connecting with wonderful people around the world. And use your left hand to press up. Let your head come last. Oh, the quote. Cannot forget the quote. This is a quote by TKV Desikachar. 
Yoga exists in the world because everything is linked. Yoga exists in the world because everything is linked. Let's bring our hands together. Hands to your forehead, reminding you to have clear and loving thoughts. Hands to your heart center, reminding you to have clear and loving intentions. And hands to your mouth, reminding you to have clear and loving communication, sending all of this wonderfully connected energy out to all beings everywhere. Love, health, healing. Namaste. You did it. I'm so proud of you. We made it through. I lost my hair tie. My eyelashes didn't work out, and yet the yoga still happened. Thank you for being patient with me as I was a bit tardy. And Duke looks like he has something. Well, Allison says you don't need eyelashes, Leslie. You're lovely. Oh, thank you, Allison. You're very sweet. Tinkerbell uh, missed it. She said, next time, can you tell people when it's going to be? Of course, Tinkerbell. So, and everybody else, we're going to do this every Saturday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So every week. So that way, you know, it will be every week at the same time. Great class. Um, thank you so very much. Love the extended time in Pigeon. It was nice for me too. I love Pigeon. I'm one of the people that used to hate it and now love it. Amanda Jade says that was amazing. I feel like I could run a marathon. Thank you so much, Leslie. Thank you, Amanda Jade. Thanks for being here. Christina says thank you from the Ukraine. Hi, Christina. Thank you for joining from the Ukraine. Um, Veronica, thank you so much. This is one of the best yoga that I've ever practiced. Aw, thank you, Veronica. Thanks for being here. Um, Barbara Norris says, you're the best, Leslie. Big, big thank you to both of you. A very nice, special experience knowing you and practicing. Oh, Barbara. Big air hug to you. Miss you, my friend. If, if Do you guys have any questions while I go um, grab a little chapstick and a sip of water? So think about your questions if you have any. Um, questions about yoga or... Mm, if you have questions like burning questions about Duke. <laughs> um, Claudia Almeida says, this was amazing. Thank you so much for doing this. I felt more connected to people practicing along. Oh, thank you, Claudia. Claudia Almeida felt connected to you. I felt it too, Claudia. Um, thank you so much. Feeling super. Have a nice day. Olivia says, I've never been so relaxed. I'm so glad you're relaxed, Olivia. That's what we need right now. We need time where we can really de-stress because Things are strange and our bodies will react to that whether you know we, we realize it mentally or not. So when we come into our yoga practice and we breathe and we take that time to relax, then the parasympathetic nervous system will start to kick in and that helps you boost your immunity. More people are talking about how they didn't miss the eyelashes. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Duke tells me that too. So I love to get my eyelashes done. Okay, I know it's a guilty pleasure, but I love to get them done. But since you know everything is on lockdown, I haven't been able to. So I have like maybe two left. <laughs> so I tried to put on like the glue-on kind. It's a disaster. I don't know how people do it, honestly. Kimberly um, Giordano says, question. When you have us, when you have us uh, lower to the floor from plank, plank, uh, you tell us to shift hands down to low ribs. Mm -hmm. Then you have us rise back to plank with um, from the same position. Are the hands in the wrong position? So Kimberly wants to know when we lower from plank all the way down. I have you bring your hands by your low ribs um, when we come into baby cobra. So 
Um, but then she wants to know if the hands are in the wrong position when we go back up. Let's see. So we lower down. So my hands are, are pretty much already by my low ribs because I shift forward before I lower. But a lot of people I notice when they come down to the belly, their hands are up here. So that's why I tell them by the low ribs. So from here, hands are by low wrist, ribs. I want my wrist and my elbow about the same line. And so when I press back to plank, take a breath in. Then, yeah, they're pretty much in the right, yeah. I'd say yes, they're in the right place. But if they're not for you, because people are proportionally different, um, make your adjustments so that when you come into plank, your wrists and your shoulders are in line. So for many people, it's, it just happens. I've just seen it so many times when you come down on your belly, your hands are like way up here instead of down here. But, we, but really what we wanna do is make sure the wrists and the elbow line up. My one friend teacher, she says, line up your fingertips with your nipples <laughs> she goes everybody has them so barb mustard sent a donation i love you barb mustard thanks for your donation you're such a sweetie Mwah. question which part of your hips work for butterfly and how do we loosen those is butterfly is this this is butterfly right i'm asking duke no <laughs> um i believe this is butterfly and how do we loosen them well so the adductors are also part of it, the inner thighs, and then also it's the whole hip. It's the um, gluteus, minimus, medius, and maximus. And then how do we loosen those? Well, this position is, of course, a great way to loosen them. And also, uh, upavista konasana is another way to do it. So what I would say is, um, so this one, can be really challenging, but if you're like reading a book, watching television, um, doing something like that, come into this one and like have your book here or watch your TV and then build up some pillows and blankets so you can kind of lean forward. And then over time, you'll be able to lean a little bit more and a little bit more. You could do it with this one and you can do the same thing with this one. Candy Wilson gave a donation. Candy? Hi, Candy Wilson. Thanks for your donation. Mwah. Uh, Maria Londonio, uh, how long is it safe to hold pigeon pose? Maria, I, I'm not sure how long it's safe to hold pigeon, but I've held it for a good, you know, 20 minutes. Um, I think that, you know, you want to listen to your body and make sure that nothing starts to hurt because there's no pain in yoga. There's stretching, there's that sensation, but if there's any sharp pains, that means your body is communicating with you to stop. So just kind of see how it feels. If you hold it for like two, three minutes, your body really starts to relax. Uh, Tinkerbell says, if you're super tight, would you say that you can overdo yoga moves? Tinkerbell wants to know if you're super tight, could you overdo yoga moves? Tinkerbell, everybody could overdo yoga moves. Um, if you're super tight, you actually probably have more, well, you definitely have more stability in your body. So it'll be harder for you to overdo, not that you can't. Um, those who are not tight, they're very, very flexible. Those are the people that have to be extra careful as far as keeping the muscles engaged while stretching. If you're tight, your muscles are going to engage automatically because they're tight. But of course, you can always overdo it. And I would recommend when you're practicing your yoga, you know, there's 100% uh, effort. I would say stay around the 80% effort line. Someone wants to know how they can do a handstand. Hmm. Handstands are cool and fun. If you've not, yeah, if you've not done a handstand um, yet, why don't we do that? We'll do it next week. I'll show a couple different ways to work into it. And if you don't do handstand, if you're afraid of handstand, don't worry, still come next week because I'll, I'll have other things for you to do instead. Olga wants to know, um, can you do some pranayama practice? 
Yes, Olga likes pranayama practice. I love it too. So let's put that in. Some handstands, some pranayama. Um, Memal says, I have super stretchy hips and inner yeah. abductors, but because I have weak muscles, yeah. it gives me problems. Should right. I not do butterfly pigeon? Well, I'd say that you can do the poses. What was, what was her name again? Olga? Is that Olga, Duke? No. So who was it? Oh. Mamau. Oh, Mamau. I would say, Mamau, that you can still practice, you know, butterfly, pigeon pose. Um, but what's really important for you, that, that work we did today, like these, using these muscles as you come into those poses. So don't just like flop into it because you can. For you, instead of thinking about releasing all your muscles, while you're in those poses, you're gonna think about hugging them all in, and that'll keep it safer, and will help to um, build those muscles over time. And the things that we did today on the side, those are really good for you to do. Also, the um, Gomoka, or, uh, Eagle Garudasana, arms and legs, especially the legs, that's another one that will help to um, get those muscles to become stronger. Darren Kelly says, my knee and lower back. I feel tightness in my hamstring. What would you recommend? Um, okay, so lower back. I'm not sure about the knee, um, but if you have pain in your lower back and your hamstrings, I would say the one that we did last week when you're lying down on your back and you lift the leg, if you have a yoga strap, you could put it on the ball of your foot and your, your leg may not straighten all the way but um, straighten it as much as it will, just so that you feel a stretch. Um, if it's one knee, I'm wondering if you did something to that one knee. If you're, if you're in your standing poses with your legs straight, you could be locking out your knee joints. So this is, okay, I'll do it with my arm because it's really easy to see. Okay, so this is my straight arm. This is locking. Oh, sorry. Okay, this is my straight arm, right? So I'm firming my muscles, I'm keeping it straight. This is when I lock my joint, what it looks like. See how this kind of goes in? It's like bent too much. So if you have pains, like in the backs of your elbows or in the backs of your knees, that could be from hyperextending or going, going past straight. Justine Shu uh, gave a donation. Hi, Justine Shu. Thank you so much for your donation. Barbara Noor wants to know, does Duke practice yoga? Duke is a fantastic yogi. Duke practices very regularly. Although right now, Duke has been training for a marathon. So he's still practicing his yoga, but he's running a lot more. So he, there's no marathon that he's training for. There's no specific marathon. But he and Indy, our 15-year-old, they're just doing the marathon training. And they're going to have their very own father-son marathon, where I'll be out there giving them water and, yeah. <laughs> Tiny Tina says that her leg falls asleep in pigeon. Is that normal? Tiny Tina? Is that Tina from Australia? Um, yes, your leg could fall asleep in pigeon. But I, what I would do, it's happened to me, of course. Um, what I would do is kind of move a little bit to reawaken it. You might be um, putting, well, make sure your hips are level there. You're not going off to one side. And then you might just be putting a little much pressure on your leg. So just kind of be lighter with your, your upper body weight on that leg. Justine Shu um, has a question. Hi, Justine Shu. So happy to practice with you live again. Same question as someone else. During pigeon, should we be trying to get our foot underneath parallel to the mat? Mm. Yeah, a lot of people ask me about that. So pigeon pose. Um, a lot of teachers will teach to bring this shin parallel with the front of the mat, like so. However, I don't think that that is a good instruction because the way that your humerus, your leg bone, fits into the hip socket, I believe that's the acetabula, um, it's different for different people the way it fits in. So if you lay down, for example, 
and like you normally like your feet just kind of flop open then that the way that it fits in is more externally rotated for some people their feet don't flop open they could flop in or point straight up and that means that it's less externally rotated so the question justine or the answer to your question is maybe see how it feels for your body there's no reason to force it and especially if you have the kind of leg into hip socket that's not externally rotating then you could you could hurt your uh, knee and hip so i would never push it um, i think it's totally fine to do pigeon with this heel closer to the pelvis if that is better for your hip cheryl pass gave a donation thank you cheryl thank you for your donation Mwah. um Alina, Alina, Alina. Says, um, I've been doing yoga for a while, but never managed to do crow. Okay. Is it a lack of strength in my abs, or <gasps> did I not have the correct arms and leg position? Also, there was a request for crow next week. Yes. Okay. So we'll do handstand, crow, pranayama. So crow is a tricky one. It took a long time, and I still can't actually do it with my arms straight. So um, come next week, Alina. And I will show you all of my little tit, tr da, tricks and tips for crow. I think that's it for today. Thank you guys so much. I think that's all the time we have for today. I can hear Stone upstairs getting, a, he's like rustling about, he's getting a little antsy. So um, next week, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, you can Google time zones if you're not sure what time that is for you i mean everybody who, who's here probably knows but if anyone else invite your friends because it's always more fun to practice with a friend and the more people that we can get to practice together at the same time the more community and energy that we will get on a positive level and when we send out that positive energy it heals everyone so i will see you next week my my wonderful sweet friends